views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Have I got a wonderful, wonderful show for you today. First, I wanted to give uh, some acknowledgement before we get we get started. I wanted to thank so much Transformation Talk Radio and the staff, Jessica, Justin, Linda, Kim, Carter, Dr. Pat, this amazing team of people that support me and all the people at Transformation Talk Radio so that we can bring you these amazing tools because we're living in this extraordinary time. And so I want to thank the Dr. Pat team, Transformation Talk Radio, for being the awesome support team that they are, that we can that we can bring you these amazing conversations and guests that we have that hopefully will assist you on your evolutionary path. Because right now, we all are living in these extraordinary times, and we, we don't have it all figured out, and we don't know how to do all of this. But what we do know is that we're following our heart. We're moving our physical bodies into higher vibrational ways of living and being and uh, creating a new world. Because the old world, the way that we have been living in the past, is no longer. It's coming apart. And it's asking us to have faith, to live in the heart, to move back into our true organic nature and support each other in the process. So I'm so excited today for my guests that I have here because this is somebody that is just going to um, inspire you so much. It's someone that I absolutely love and admire and this person is loved and admired in in our community here in Laconner, Washington. So Bob Skeel is a 90 year old going on 70. After 61 years of marriage, suddenly faced loss and deep loneliness with a belief that I'm too old and now what? Yet the universe orchestrated a beautiful scene in in the movie of his life. And he has a fated appointment with destiny. And he's now here to tell his story of how he chose the new world. He overcame his panic attacks and embraced self-healing with the help from his life coach, and muse. Never underestimate the power of love. Robert now finds himself living and loving life in the new world. Welcome to the show, Robert. Hey, thank you, Cornelia. It's good to be here. It's, uh, Isn't it's, uh, yes, it's, it's a wonderful uh, occasion for me because I have a chance now to talk a little bit about where I've been and where I'm going and and that wonderful period in between. So it's a great time. And, and when I was when I was um, introducing you, know, there are so many things to say about you because you you have an incredible story and an incredible background. You're an author of eight books, right? You've authored eight books. I'm surprised to, to say yes to that, but that's true. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're surprised to say yes. And 2018, I think, is going to be your ninth book. That's right. I'm in the middle of that right now. Yeah. Trying to write every day something. 
that might be uh, worthwhile reading by a few people anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But having fun doing it, the thing about it for me is that I learn a lot in the process of trying to write something that uh, I want to share with other people. And I really believe in that idea that that uh, everybody should be sharing what they're thinking and doing because we want to seek clarification, understanding every step of the way. So uh, I'm excited to write. I'm excited to be thinking, able to do both, uh, either left-handed or right-handed, but uh, uh, really happy with the process. So can you believe it? How does it feel being here now, live on Facebook, right? On, and here you are at this stage of the game, and we've been talking about this for years, and how does it feel actually to be, to be here now, loving your life? This is, it's a wonderful feeling, and I feel so, uh, so much gratitude for the chance to, to be here still. And it, it reminds me of all those occasions we had, Cornelia, when we would be, uh, I don't know whether the friends and the audience knows, but you have been a guest in my house for a number of years now, I run what's called an old crow's inn. I'm the innkeeper. And uh, you and I have spent a lot of time passing each other as we're getting coffee, uh, still in our bathrobes, but having an occasional talk and, and, uh, and uh, finding in those conversations these priceless experiences that we have together, uh, talking over any number of things and wishing at that point that we had other people listening in on it so that they could pick up where we were because we're not sure we could ever repeat it. But here we are now. Here we yeah. are having a chance. It's the weird thing about it is, though, that you're upstairs and I'm downstairs <laughs> right beneath you here talking. This is not the way we usually talk. So uh, this represents some sort of change. But nevertheless, the, the in, uh, important ingredient is there, and that is our ability to converse with each other and sh share it with other people. So... I'm all for it. It sounds great. Wonderful. I yeah, it's 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 incredible how here we are with technology uh, doing it this way. And I know that as I expand with this radio show and set up my new studio, I'm going to make it even more uh, better as time goes because it's really only been a couple months now since I've been um, live on the radio and it's been an incredible it's been an incredible journey that's why having you on today is um, is really special to me because a lot of the people that I've uh, introduced here on the show everybody as a matter of fact that I've brought on have been people that have worked with me personally and that have moved into uh, their authentic truth or are moving into their authentic truth that, that have moved into their empowerment and uh, released and made peace with their past. And that's part of the reason why I want to introduce the guests that I've been working with personally so that they can tell the story of how powerful this work is, how powerful it is uh, looking inside of yourself, learning how to emotionally process, learning how to shift negative limiting beliefs into more empowering beliefs, what's true for you, learning how to do all of these things that, um, that, 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 are, that we're capable of of doing within ourselves and learning how to trust our own inner authority. And so that's, um, that's the joy of what's happening now and, and sharing it with as many people as possible. And here you are, a person like yourself, who is 90 years old, going on 70, and you are such an inspiration and pillar in the community because people can't even believe when they look at you, they can't even believe that you are 90 years old. And so do you feel, do you feel 90? Well, there's sometimes when I do actually, Cornelia, I feel 90 sometimes. My body tells me it's not the same body uh, that I had uh, 30 years ago. But nevertheless, there's a sense that I have about my body and about my life generally that is uh, really uh, making me want to say in some way that I'm actually younger than I was 30 years ago. It's a strange thing to say, but that's the way I'm feeling now. I'm feeling uh, 
uh, renewed not only in spirit but in in my physical strength most of the time and I, I I'm working at it of course all the time to to try to uh, uh, improve on my stamina and uh, on my uh, zumba dancing I'm I'm trying to to uh, continue to improve my my dance steps as I work with the uh, other uh, seniors in our in our large dance groups that we have in town here uh, I try to work uh, all I can every day uh, practicing my uh, exercises my yoga at home yoga uh, walking uh, every time I get a chance to instead of getting in a car if I can avoid the car the better it is I'm uh, also trying to spend a lot of time focusing on my on my diet, I'm very concerned uh, uh, about what I eat anymore, and I feel that the the thing that we really need to focus on is what we put in our bodies. It's really important, becoming increasingly important that we understand all that goes on uh, and the effect of what we what we eat on our bodies. I just want to be in the most healthy state I can. And that's not just my physical health, it's also my spiritual health. And I've undergone a whole new um, experience with, with uh, the, the importance of the spiritual life uh, in a way that I never have had before, even though I've spent a lot of time working in that area. And uh, so now, uh, having... Uh, gotten to the point where I am now, I look back in the few short years I've been on this part of the journey since my wife's death in 2012, and I recognize so many wonderful things have happened to me and have been influences on me that have really directed me in a way now so that I, so that I am in a place uh, that uh, I'm just uh, delighting in. And uh, one of the reasons for that is because of my contact with you, Cornelia. I don't think I would be here where I am, particularly not on this radio program, <laughs> talking with you, if it had not been for our uh, magical meetings, uh, serendipitous meetings, uh, some time ago, uh, 2013, I think it was. And uh, from that point on, uh, our communication with each other, our constant conversations and uh, contacts have, have helped me to see uh, a new way of, uh, of living and uh, continuing to enjoy life in a way that uh, I hadn't before. And that's after 61 years of marriage. And I, I, I had a choice back in 2012, after my wife's death, of just... Uh, just continuing in some way or trying to become something else, something more, to experience parts of life that I had not experienced to the depth that I wanted to. So at one point I was visiting my son and daughter-in-law up in Sitka. And I can remember so well the home I was renting for the month overlooked uh, Sitka Bay and it was a beautiful sight, and there I asked myself a question. I said, what do I want to do with my life now? What do I want to do at this point as a widower? I'd never lived alone in my entire life. I realized I either lived with my parents or with my friends uh, aboard ship when I was in the service or uh, at, at college, but never alone for any length of time. And suddenly here I was, alone for one thing, and that led me to say, okay, given that circumstance, what do I do now? What is the direction I should take? What do I value most? And I started working with that notion, and I came to a conclusion that so many people have before me, although for me it was brand new, and that was the cornerstone of anything I do is just somehow connected with trying to love better than I ever have before. And I call this love, a, a, an unconditional love, and realizing when I said that and committed myself to it, that probably it's a long, it's a long, hard thing to ever get to that point. But nevertheless, I thought it was a worthy goal to try 
to at least approximate as I moved along in my in my journey, and uh, that was a that was a commitment I made and a and a commitment I still hold to. I haven't found anything in my experience so far to to make me think this isn't the right way to be moving, the right journey to be taking, and uh, uh, it's not always worked out like I've wanted it to because along with that idea of living an unconditional in, in unconditional love was the idea that I was not going to uh, tie myself down. I was going to live a life in which I was going to la- let myself be vulnerable, open, bringing in new experiences. So I was not going to tie myself up as I saw other people do at my age. So I decided then and there, that I was not going to just immediately react and just stay in my little space at my wonderful old home in Lacana. So I had this double commitment, unconditional love, and then moving out and being making myself open and vulnerable to what was around me. I can't solve the problems in the whole world, but I can, I can work with the issues that are in my world, in my personal world, those people around me and in my small community. And so that's what I decided to do. So then I came back uh, to LaConnor and began to work with that concept. And it wasn't long before uh, I ran into you, Cornelia. <laughs> you remember as well as I do, it was a deep fog one morning in LaConnor, as it often is in the spring. It was March or April probably. and. Uh, uh, it, the fog was really thick, and I was running. I was running out to the marina as I did every morning, and uh, I saw a figure in the fog and almost bumped into Cornelia. She had her yellow jacket on, had her little white dog walking with her, and uh, we we exchanged a few words. And I remember saying, "Oh, what a magical morning this is!" And she said, "Well, she wasn't. She said she wasn't so sure. It was all that magical." So it was so hard to get around, and and uh, I let that pass, and we we said goodbye to each other, and that was that. But that same day in the afternoon, the fog had cleared; it gotten beautiful out. The sun was shining, and she was Cronia was walking with her in her same yellow jacket with a little white dog out toward the marina again. I was walking back from the marina in my afternoon run, and I said, "It looks like our paths are going to cross." So I said, "Okay, let's do this." So we our paths crossed right in the middle of a parking lot um, in, at the marina, and there was not a car around. But we stopped there and started to talk with each other. And she said, "Well, what's up with you?" And I said, "I gave her my story. I told her what I just told you." And uh, I said, "This my my life is just just based on." Unconditional love, that's the only thing I feel makes life worth living, is to work in that field. And she said, that's really strange because uh, I work in this field too. And my, I have this, I'm a life coach and I have this, uh, the foundation of my whole life's work is, is love. That's the foundation of it. And I said, well, I said, Cornelia, I think by then I knew your name. I said, I said to you. I said something. Like, well, you know, Cornelia, uh, I really, I really, my love is so unconditional. I even love you, a total stranger. And uh, she said, you know, same thing for me. I love you, even though you're a total stranger. At that point, we embraced, and we held that embrace for a few seconds and longer than I thought we might, and. We broke away, both laughing, and she said, I want your telephone number. we got to get together. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, this couldn't be a proposition. She's much too young for me. But in any event, uh, she turned then and yelled to three women that were walking along in the n- neighboring parking lot, asking for a pen and a, a paper and pencil so she could write our numbers down. And then she said, um, I'd like to talk with you again because I'm going to have a retreat coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, a retreat, I said. That sounds interesting. What's that about? She said, well, it's, it's about transformation. And I said, oh, no, I don't want to be involved in, in, in new world stuff. 
She said, okay, okay. She said, if you attend, I tell you, I, I, I guarantee you, if you attend, you will come out a changed person. Something will have happened that will move you in the right kind of direction. Then I said to myself, oh, yeah, I bet. But I will check out your website, I said, and I'll let you know. So I did. I checked out her website and came back the next day. We saw each other again on our walks. She said, well, how did it look to you? And I said, I don't want anything to do with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's all new world stuff. And I said, I'm just not really interested. Then I stopped myself. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't I just vow to be open and vulnerable and continue to learn? Right there, I stopped myself and I said, wait a minute. Okay, Cornelia, how much does it cost? $150 for the weekend? Okay, I'll, I'll buy in. I'm going to come just to point out to you that you're probably wrong and I'm not going to change, but I'm opening myself to that possibility. So that's what I did. I actually went to that retreat just so everybody knows. Cornelia gives these retreats every now and then. There were 14 or 15 people, wonderful people present. Of course, all of them younger, but here I was among this younger crowd. There were a few that were more elderly, I might say, but anyway, I was clearly the oldest. But nevertheless, she was right. It did change my life. And that was the wonderful thing. And it did it in such a simple way, just by helping me to uh, see that uh, it was okay to open up, to discuss things that I hadn't discussed with anybody for a long time. And they were the views I were getting back, the reactions I were getting back were from younger people who had a liveliness and a uh, uh, an alertness about their things. And they were listening hard and also sharing with me where they were. And I felt that whole, the impact of that whole uh, conversation for over those three days was just beautiful and really was moving. And it did change me. It started me on a way on my journey that's still in progress now. And it's been for me a very exciting journey with all sorts of aspects to it that we can spend time talking about but I'm really happy to be here with Cornelia now and be in this place because Cornelia has been instrumental in helping me get here. And I wouldn't want to ever leave uh, anybody thinking that she had anything but the singular important part to play in my life because she has. It's been a wonderful relationship, a working relationship, a spiritual relationship of the first order. And I've never really had anything like this before. And I'm just so delighted and so grateful and so, and having so much fun on top of everything else. <laughs> so, so that's where I am, Cornelia. I know, that's a beautiful, thank <laughs> you so much for sharing all that. The retreats certainly are fun. But, you know, what we want to focus on right now is you. We want to focus on how you have really faced some of the, the things that so many people right now are having a hard time with, facing loss, facing uh illnesses, facing depression, facing um, facing themselves for the first time, and, you know, um, unworthiness, unworthiness being a core wound. We were talking about that yesterday. You discovered in uh, one of your meditations, we, you were sharing with me how all of a sudden you had a realization that you've had for your entire life. Would you like to tell us about that? Sure, uh, Cornelia, I'd be happy to. I, uh, I still fumble around a little bit with this because this is all new experience for me. But I, one of the things I wanted to do as part of my commitment to living an unconditional, in, in a state of unconditional love as best I could and as well as I understood that. So uh, as part of that process, I wanted to... Uh, do what Cornelia suggests in her book, uh, Peace, the, the uh, Flip Side of Anger, which is a very helpful book. She's showing a copy of it there. Uh, just, reading, just reading through that book gives you a, a basic working knowledge of what's going on internally and the things that you have to deal with when you want to try to improve your understanding and appreciation of yourself particularly but also the world in which you live. All that is all that is wrapped up 
in in what Cornelia is about in her own work because she really feels that it's what happens inside that affects the outside. Uh, that uh, if you want if you want peace in the world, you've got to you've got to have peace within, and not only that, you've got to be peace yourself. So that's what that means. And so I've taken that that seriously because I was interested in that because I, as I said to you, I'm opening myself up to learn something new about anything, but particularly about myself. And I realized early on that I had a tremendous amount to learn about myself and that one of the ways I was going to do this was, number one, read a lot of the right books. And Cornelia's book is one of those. Uh, Marion Williamson's book on Return to Love, which Cornelia recommended, is another basic book. It's based on the Course of Miracles. And uh, that's a wonderful uh, foundation for gaining more self-understanding. And there were other things out there. For example, look, yeah. Excuse me. I was gonna. I was gonna take you back to um, the meditation that you, the realization of the meditation that you had the other day, when you had a realization about um, how you had an underlining fear that was with you yeah. your entire life. Right. Believe it or not, I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to get there. But uh, okay. the one thing, one th- other book I wanted to mention was a small little book called uh, Pathways to Surrender because that became important as well as Cornelia's book to help me to understand uh, where I needed to go. And Mm -hmm. the the experience that uh, Cornelia is referring to was something that happened recently, just a couple of days, a couple of mornings ago, because now I've been practicing meditation, trying to figure out what meditation, what methodology is uh, relevant for me in terms. So I've I've had guided meditation. I have listened to tapes uh, while I was in my quiet zone. Uh, so I have begun then to now at this point to eliminate any kind of guidance at all and just go in. I'm at that point in my meditation, not knowing where that's going to lead me, but just being quiet in the moment, in the mornings, usually very early in the mornings, because I don't want the distractions to take over because I am so easily distracted. I can't believe how easily distracted I am. Uh, and so I, because I've got because I'm older, I'm packing so much memory and thinking about so many things almost simultaneously, almost overwhelms me sometimes. So that's one of the things about growing older is that you become aware of all the dynamics going on around you. At least that's been true in my case. So it's a matter of slowing down and concentrating. And in my concentration, I've been working with a process that Cornelia has uh, uh described in her book and, and worked with and helped me to work with, which is this emotional processing, she calls it, uh, where you really open yourself up to, to deeply experience what it is that's bothering you. So you don't, you don't hide anything. You don't bury stuff. I grew up in the Midwest, and the Midwest is notorious for burying information, for not talking about things, for not really sharing, for holding them in, suppressing them. And that has a bad effect and have a bad effect on the body. And I'm beginning to study that. Louise Hayes' books, is, uh, Hayes books are, are wonderful in that respect. And Cornelia's picked up on that theme, too, and has her own, has her, had her own experiences uh, with the effect of buried emotions on your, on, your, uh, on your life, on your physical body. So I'm, I have all that as background. So I'm focusing now on, on my own uh, self in terms of how I improve and how I tackle things. And one of the things that I was looking at was the whole issue of the power of understanding uh, that uh, understanding God as a force or as a power so that it's not God is not something that I see outside of myself, but something that's within, deeply within and readily available and accessible to people if they become conscious enough to be aware of that. And I was just beginning now to experience, he's beginning in the last weeks, beginning to experience the possibilities that are there for me in this meditation about my connection with God. And the reason I mention that is because I note that the more I'm able to keep in that connection to 
be conscious of the presence of this power, of this love, which I'll call love, in my life, I am able then to deal with other things within myself that I, I struggle with. And one of the things I struggle with is the whole issue of my self-image. I am working with Cornelia's concept of processing, and what I'm processing is a notion of myself as uh, being in a state of fear. This is what I was thinking the other day, and I, I had never realized it about myself. You know, there are two basic emotions, love and fear, and I said, well, I'm not in fear, but I realized after extensive meditation on working with Cornelia's process that there is a fear. I wake up, I'm in a state of fear almost immediately, and it's the fear, the fear is I tried to, as I work through this, what kind of fear, and it turns out to be what I would refer to as the fa fear of failure. I spend every morning trying to think, okay, how am I going to get through this day uh, in a way that's going to be satisfactory to me and going to bring the love that I want to bring to the people that I'm in contact with? How am I going to express successfully my vow, my notion of unconditional love? Yeah. And so I found myself fearful that I might not be able to pull that off in some way. And so then I began to look with that. And so I'm peeling that layer back and I say, okay, first it's fear. Then I locate the fear, it's fear of failure. And then I dig deeper and I suddenly come on this vision of a deep hole, just endless, almost deep hole. And down at the very bottom of it is inadequacy. And I yeah. discover what's really behind me, what's really deep within me and probably been there for, I don't know how long, maybe since my birth, I don't know, but it's been there forever. And it's a sense of inadequacy. I am cannot, I cannot function adequately. I do not feel myself to be adequate to the task of living and loving the way I want to. So there it is at the very bottom. I've discovered that. And I am so thrilled to discover that. And why? Because now I can bring it out into the light. I can get it out where I can talk with it. I can share it with all of you on, on transformational radio. I can't believe I'm even doing this. But here I am. <laughs> Uh, talking not only with Cornelia like I do all the time, but also talking with all of you about about what this process involves. And it's uh, it's a wonderful uh, process. It takes a long time. It's taken me a long time to get to this point. But here I am now looking at this concept I have of myself as inadequate in some way. Where does that come from? And so I'm exploring that. And But the, the beautiful thing about it is as I'm exploring that, I'm also experiencing this other side, which is the sense of God's presence in my life. I have now, I'm now at the point where I'm experiencing not only this inadequacy, I'm also experiencing uh, this uh, love of God that's present within me, this force, this energy that's within me that is actually accessible to me, which and, and which when I make contact with it, it, uh, completely eliminates my sense of inadequacy. Excellent. And so I come, I come to the conclusion then that the only way I can live, the only way I can possibly want to live is to be in constant contact with this reality within me, uh, this uh, whatever you want to call it, God, Holy Spirit, life force. There is something there and it's been repeated in history by, by leaders throughout the, the world that there is something there, and I'm in, I'm tapping into that. And everybody, I'm feeling, can tap into that once they become conscious of it. But they've got to take the initiative. I have to take the initiative. This didn't happen to me uh, out of the blue uh, accidentally. I've been working on this, and I have worked toward that. Um, one, of the, one of the most wonderful books I read in the process of that was The Practice of the Presence of God, Brother Lawrence's book. All of Many of you may know that, but if you don't, uh, you should get a little, it's a small book, but it's powerfully packed because it, sh it actually expresses a way of, of thinking about God uh, within the Christian tradition, this is, but it's easily expandable to anybody in any, tra any religious tradition. And I just find that I find myself using the wordage that Brother Lawrence uses, or the people that wrote about Brother Lawrence, uh, 
in my own practice because practice seems to me to be just the exact right word to be using. Practicing, practicing. I'm not sure that practice makes perfect. I'm not sure I would go that far, but it's certainly what I feel I need to make any headway at all. And so I'm saying, oh my word, if I can just live in this presence, if I can just be conscious, the more I can be conscious of that, the better I'm going to be because it'll be, it'll, it'll help me to reach that level of confidence, overcoming inadequacy, overcoming any sense of lack of self-worth, anything that prevents me from being truly the person I, I think I really am at heart, uh, an authentic human being who has something to offer to other people and also appreciates what other people bring to him. So I am just in the midst of this right now, Cornelia, and uh, I have nothing to offer anybody else. I can only tell you, share with you where I am. And for me, it's a really exciting place to be. I don't care what age you are, it's an exciting place to be. And I am just so happy that I am now discovering for the first time not only a level of happiness, but a, a sense of joy about what I'm doing. A sense of joy is really exactly it. Yeah. Okay, Cornelia, that's where I am. <laughs> that's, that's so beautiful. I, I I love listening to you. I you know at so many different times I wanted to intercept, but you're on such a flow right now that mm. I just wanted to I just wanted to see you flowing and going. But I, the one thing that that uh, stands out is when you're talking about being in that in that place where you are in in your divinity, and how you just want to be there continuously. That is the part of the awakening to remembering uh, that we are not separate from our divinity, that we are not separate from God, that we are at one with God. You and I are going to have another conversation next week when I bring you back where we're going to talk about religion, God, spirituality, and we're also going to take callers next week that can call in and that can ask you questions and that can ask me questions 30 minutes after we go live. And I'm going to be handing out, gifting one lucky caller a $100 bill. And you're going to have to tune in next week because I want to tell you about how that $100 bill um, is making its way into your hands. And uh, so next week for that. And then, of course, we're going to talk about religion, spirituality, all these different different things. But, you know, healing the core wound, the separation of is, is for all of us is that, you know, God is not separate. And that's that's part of our our. Um, our work is releasing the feelings of separation, releasing the feelings of inadequacy, releasing the feelings of not worthy, not good enough, releasing the feelings of failure, because none of these things are really true. Because if we are in alignment with our divinity and our humanity at the same time, we can, we as multidimensional beings are able to have that capacity to be this this amazing human that can hold space and compassion for yourself and at the same time have your higher wisdom and your divinity present at the same time this is one of uh, my gifts that that I'm living is walking in walking with my shadow and my divinity at the same time and so it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful walk because everything that has been in the dark about yourself that you don't like about yourself that you don't love about yourself that you don't um, that you haven't loved free is one of my mantras is coming up to be healed and to be loved so that everything can be um, brought home within you because heaven is a state of consciousness within and so um, it's 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 wonderful to have this conversation with you I want to be able to uh, tell the listeners about a little bit more about, you know, your 61 years of marriage, uh, how all of a sudden you were faced with that loss. And um, and then you, you also overcame panic attacks. And I, I want to touch a little bit about that. So feel free to answer where you are right now with that. Sure, Cornelia. Thank you. Um, going back, I have to take you back to 2012. 
uh, or even before, really, my wife, uh, Joanne, uh, developed uh, Alzheimer's. And uh, this dementia, as you know, uh, goes nowhere but downhill. It's a downward spiral. Uh, I could just see it now just uh, circling around as, as she got worse. We would repeat ourselves going through the same experiences, but each time we did, it was a little worse, a little different, and a little more discouraging and disconcerting. And finally, finally, Joanne uh, arrived at the point where I was forced to place her in a, a memory care institution, which uh, I could I could spend a lot of time talking with people interested in that question, because uh, what I discovered was that uh, there were people in that particular institution, that particular facility that loved Joanne, could care for her actually better than I could. So with great reluctance, I uh, placed Joanne in the care of these wonderful people. And they took good care of her. But the result of that was a, a, a experience of loss that I've never had before in my life and I hope never to have again. That was a horrible experience. And, any, and I now work with a group of caregivers who are have uh, loved ones in various uh, degrees of, of dementia of one kind or another because there are many kinds of dementia. And uh, when it comes to placement, they all say the same thing I experienced. They all describe it the same way. It's just horrendous because it's the time you realize that uh, you're never going to never things are never going to be the same. That you're going to be leading separate lives. And one thing I quote in one of my poems about I wrote about this called "Separations Grief" was this statement: Joanne. This is what I wrote about it at one point, Joanne, memory shot, dead to me, but still alive. Ah. Uh, and that's what happens. You, I, I drove home after I'd placed Joanne as gently and as lovingly as I could in the hands of these wonderful people. Driving home, I couldn't see my way because I was, I was crying. just to bring it up uh, tr triggers me but uh i got home and of course opened the door and uh nobody there so uh the only thing that saved me there was the fact that my four children all called me they were aware of what was happening and uh, so that comforted me for the moment uh, somebody had asked me to go out with them for dinner as a way of helping me to deal with my sudden loneliness. And uh, I turned them down because the reason was because if I had gone out with them and then came back, I'd be coming back to this house even more lonely than I felt at that time. So I said, no, I wasn't going to allow myself to experience that to that depth. So there began uh, my, my life separate from Joanne's such that when she died seven months later, it was not nearly as harrowing, not nearly as lonely as that first time in that placement. So I, want to, I just want to say that that loss was deeply felt and is still felt. Uh, even now, five years later, there are moments like you just saw where I'm triggered and begin to cry again because that just brings up things. So, uh, I ask you, can I ask you uh, that level of loneliness that you had to face? Because that's also part of our topic today, Bob. Yes, is the level of loneliness that you had to face. Is that um, level of loneliness something that is still present in your life the way that it was before, or has since? the way that you are with your being now with your life has you has has loneliness um found its way out the door and a new that's exactly what uh, is happening Konya. is the latter i have 
I'm experiencing now a full life and there's very little room in it for loneliness. Um, there just isn't much, there just isn't much loneliness in my life anymore, except at the bottom, there is this feeling uh, that uh, with all the wonderful experiences I'm having now, there is this, this little inclination saying to me, uh, yeah, but what about a partner for you? What about someone for you? And so I am leaving here as part of my philosophy, of my working philosophy, I'm leaving myself open uh, to consider that, to consider someone, even at my age, joining me for a partnership that would be uh, the kind that in which we would find uh, comfort in each other and be able to express our love. Uh, to each other in ways appropriate uh, to our age. And I, I think that is just uh, a wonderful thing to envision. But the, so many other things have happened that now has become only an alternative because of my connection with Cronia especially, I have been able to address this issue of loneliness and begin to find uh, a way out of it. And that is that is to find in two, in two ways that I can think of quickly offhand. One is to find uh, wonderful relationships in the community that support and, and sustain me. I want to be with people who want to be with me. And that is a wonderful thing to experience. And yeah. there are people in this wonderful, this little community of ours, 950 people. I think that was the last count. Uh, and there are many there that are really watching out for me. I'm watching out for him. And it's intergenerational. I have a, there's a young couple across the street that just moved in here. They're renting a house. And uh, they're just, they're, uh, they've had, they have one child who's two and they're expecting another one soon. It is so wonderful to be part of that experience, to be, uh, in effect, a grandparent to them, uh, to be able to associate with them and to hear where they are in their thinking and in their love and in their, uh, in their growth, and uh, it, well, it, that's nothing but a privilege to have that, and it certainly takes away the loneliness. But the big thing, uh, Cornelia, is really this connection with uh, with what you're saying, with divinity or with the divine. Uh, and as I say, I don't care what the name is. What I recognize is the reality of that in my life now, and that is so comforting to me, so uh, rewarding, so um, helpful. In terms of me, in terms of my being able, even to begin to express what I want to, in terms of unconditional love to the people that surround me and, and with whom I make contact, and uh, I just I see no end to it. I want to. Uh, I've become the lay leader for the little Methodist church here in town. I joined that because it was the only church in town other than the Catholic church. And I would go into the Catholic church if that's all there was, but there had to be this Methodist church. So I started going there after 25 years absence from any church and found their uh, level of, uh, of uh, concern and comfort and uh, joy that uh, I think is just wonderful. So, so I was elected a, a lay, the lay leader there. I don't, I don't know what he, all that means, but one thing it means to me is that I want to find, it's a way for me to, to express myself uh, in terms of this commitment I made to unconditional love. It's the vehicle through which I can help to express, that, that the church is going to help me to express that love institutionally and in terms of membership. So now I have this wonderful opportunity, Cornelia, uh, if I can just take a minute to do that, because I have to bring in something else that I do and love to do, which is baking, which you know. Uh, I've spent a lot of time baking, and I bake large groups, large uh, uh, bags of muffins for various people. It started out just as a small uh, gesture to neighbors, and I usually bake them a few muffins, and then I would fresh muffins, and then I would add a poem uh, in the ba in the bag with it. So now that's expanded to the point where I'm doing a lot of baking uh, many times a week, and people seem to enjoy the product I, I produce, and, and I, I love baking. There's something very poetic, something very spiritual about it to begin with. Uh, and so I now want to take that concept 
and begin to deliberately go into people's homes, the membership, the church, uh, the members of the church, go to their homes, bring them muffins and talk poetry and talk about God's love for them. So I am, that's the direction I'm going now. And that's something I've never done before. And I find that really an exciting thing to be doing, that it's, uh, it's just adding another dimension to my, what I consider already interesting life. And I just wouldn't give up what I'm doing now for anything. It's just been, it's just really fun. And at the heart of it is what I'm experiencing now is actually, actually I can, cannot explain it other than it's joy, pure joy. And it's just such a wonderful place to be. And, and I, and I just want to share that with people, anybody that'll listen, you know, because it's just, it's just, a, it's, it's an electrifying place to be right now, Cornelia. And to have here, you here, uh, just is, uh, just makes it so much more uh, meaningful to me because you're the one I can blame for starting this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, in the new world, we're, we're not blaming. We, we don't, we don't blame. <laughs> So we, we don't do that. We take responsibility for ourselves and, and blessings Good. to you for taking such great responsibility for your own joy, for your own happiness, for uh, releasing the pain from the past and uh, healing the separation of loneliness and being your own best partner and then bringing that best partner to all of your relationships. Because that's, I think, the joy that you're feeling is you're feeling so so at whole, whole with your, within yourself, and now going out into the community and sharing that self, where it's not, the self is not preoccupied with lower emotional feelings of not good enough, not worthy, separation from source, separation from God, um, the lack of self love. All of that, once the the once that that self love takes place, that unconditional self love takes place, it takes over and it becomes it becomes the joy of living, and that's what this whole uh, expression is about. And you're natural on the show. You need to have your own show. <laughs> you need to have well, your own show because you one, are just one thing, natural. One thing you mentioned there, Cornelia, that I just want to pick up on just for a brief moment. You use the term becoming whole. That this wholeness you're thinking about, I think in terms of the alternate meaning for that is wholeness, holiness. Be, it, to be whole is to be holy. That's one and the same thing. To be to be completely whole in one as a being, uh, and as and in relation to uh, this this force of love or whatever energy you want to call it. That that is a totality that is whole can be described either as whole or holy it's the same thing in my estimation it's a sacred it's a sacred concept and at least that's what i i prefer to say about it because the way i i prefer to look at it that way because we have a choice of how we want to look at things and uh that how we look at things is not is is really important uh, and I see no, I see no reason not to think that the wholeness I feel as a human being, the wholeness that anybody feels, where everything is operating in harmony, uh, is anything other than sacred, other than holy. That to me is the meaning of holy. So I am, maybe I'm doing a reductionism that I that that, that it doesn't deserve, but I I really feel so strongly these days. That the that the di difference between our normal life and our sacred life is so close and can be really the same thing. And so oh, I, love that. I love that. Let's yeah, I love that. Let's let's um end it there on the sacred walk. That our our life is a sacred walk, a sacred journey. It's the sacred and the holy whole the one yeah i can you believe that this hour is just about up we have like a couple minutes left bob and we have been speaking for an hour and we didn't even run any commercials it's just incredible how how fast time goes by so i want to thank you 
for being so vulnerable and being so open with your sharing self and sharing with us and um, inspiring our listeners that it doesn't matter how old you are, that at any at any age, people can begin the awakening to remembering journey to find the peace within themselves. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. And I want to thank the first sponsor of uh, the Cornelia Stephanie radio show is Dieter Ernst. Dieter Ernst, he is the inventor of the best flying car in the world. And so thank you so much for being the first sponsor for the Cornelia Stephanie show. And you will hear more about the flying car in the future, but you heard it here first. I love speaking uh, new life into being and acknowledging and recognizing uh, the gifts that we all came to share. So I want to say that to um, the sponsors out there. And I also want to send a shout out to my beloved, my uh, partner. Uh, this morning, we, um, we got into a fight. And I just want to say that, you know, we don't have it all figured out. We're, we're learning how to communicate with each other in new ways. And that requires sometimes having these uh, tough conversations and having uh, ways to find bridges to be able to have each person heard and have each person understood. And so, baby, I love you and I, um, I love you. And so I want to say that. And the other thing I want to say is that... Uh, People that want to work with me, there's a ton of support that I have created that's available for you. Every single day, I have a, an online membership program that is a global uh, membership community, and everybody should sign up for it. It's uh, only $10 a month, and it is daily inspirational messages straight from source straight from the inner authority that I share in an online community that are five to 10 minute, minutes long. They have audio messages and text also. And then this is an opportunity to for me to share my gifts and bring my creations into being and then also sharing, share them within an online tribe so that we can have uh, communication about creating the new world together. So that's one. Go to CorneliaStephanieVIP.com, and it's it's part four, raising your daily vibration. That's part. Uh, Bob is the one actually that is my editor, and he edits all of the uh, daily messages that I record. And so we make a wonderful team there. And then I also have, if you want to coach with me, you can go to CorneliaStephanie.com and look under my coaching packages. And I also have a course that I created that's going to be launched in January, on January the 8th. It's an e-course. And you can look under CorneliaStephanie.com under Evolve, and there is courses listed. It's, it's a 21-day peace course, and it really assists you in creating your own inner peace garden. And it's audio recordings and take a look at my website and see if this is something that would interest you for the new year. And then also give it as a gift to someone else because so many people, like Bob said, it's not about what's happening out there. It's about our own inner community, the people that we see every single day. That's where we can support each other. That's how we can change the world. That's how we can show up for each other. It's about building our beloved community in our communities. And that's one of the things that I really prize in being here in Laconer because we have been able to have this small pot of people that uh, where we can express uh, our our joy, and it's it's a wonderful a wonderful way to do that. And so I hope that you um, reach out for support because part of it part of this is it's not um, it's you're not alone. And we are moving at the speed of light. And so just know that all of this has a purpose. And you can, too, discover the joy within your own inner being. So, Bob, do you have any final um, words that you want to share? Would you like to read one of your uh, latest poems with us? Sure. Uh I don't have anything available right now, but what the, the one thing I really wanted to say to break in just at this one point is that, as you mentioned, I edit uh, your daily uh, membership 
uh, posts that go out to, and uh, in the process, I'm learning uh, an awful lot with that. But the other thing about it is, the wonderful thing about it, being a, a member and participating in this on a daily basis is that you have a chance then too to express your own views too. And you get the membership talking to each other. That's another form of uh, sharing, which I read, another way of telling our stories on an ongoing basis. And I think that has been so wonderful for all of us to have a chance to communicate with each other uh, in this format. And I, I, I really think it's, uh, I, I, so I just back you up and support you in this idea of getting everybody. I'm a member and have been right along and I, I wouldn't miss it. So uh, I just really think it's such a wonderful experience and can do nothing but just help in the process of, of our journey. Yeah, it's a great thing. Thank so you. So I Thank do have, I do, if, if, do we have enough time for a poem? I think so. I haven't, I haven't heard anything, so I think we're okay. <laughs> Why don't I give you one? Why don't I give you a poem that um, I have to read it here, so I have to get my face off camera a little bit. It's I wanted to just to highlight uh, trying to I was trying to put in poetry what it is to uh, lose somebody. This is four months. Is that all right to do that? Yeah, uh, you, that's, that's perfect. okay with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this was my way of trying to express my loneliness uh, in form of poetry. It's called Four Months Now. Four months now, the nights are black, with thick with absence, dense with truancy. Every now and then a break, blurred vision dried, driven by nature's call. She's sitting in her familiar chair, sharing a laugh, and then as quickly to disappear. The empty fog pulling her in the trailing silence crying for a sound, a space to soften reality's harsh claim. But only, but the only voice he hears is the sound of tears making their way down his cheeks into his gray beard. Some older men, widowers they call them, die of broken hearts. It's easy to see why as he tries to mend his. He has buried her ashes in the earth. And now, to start a new life, he buries her pictures in a book, as if the closed pages will shorten time's slow mercy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Also an incredible poet. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for being so courageous and shining your light and being the inspired poster child of what it looks like to be living in the new earth. I love you so much and thank you for being on today. And I look forward to having you back next week. Thank you, Cornelia. Okay. Much love. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.